The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the sea. A very large crowd gathered around him so that he got into a boat on the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on, on land. And he taught them at length in parables. And in the course of his instruction, he said to them, Hear this, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no grain. And some seed fell on rich soil, and produced fruit. It came up and grew, and yielded thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. He added, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. And when he was alone, those present, along with the twelve, questioned him about the parables. He answered them, The mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to those outside everything comes in parables, so that they may look and see but not perceive, and hear and listen but not understand, in order that they may not be converted and be forgiven. Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear, Satan comes at once and takes away the word sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground who, when they hear the word, receive it at once with joy. But they have no roots. They last only for a time. Then when tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those sown among thorns are another sort. They are the people who hear the word, but worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, and the craving for other things intrude and choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But those sown on rich soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it, and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, it's, a, it's always a, a cause for reflection, this, um, the parable that, that Jesus speaks here, the, um, the sower uh, sowing seed. And I think that there are any number of ways to uh, fruitfully meditate on, on what he said. And uh, I will encourage you to do that, whether you do it now or you do it, <laughs> or you do it uh, sometime other than when I'm preaching will be uh, Will be fine. Will be fine for me. But I want to throw down a bit of track here. I want to. I want to see um, uh, just what it. Just what it is uh, that that Jesus is up to here. And I think the. I think the first thing that needs to be said. Um, I try to. I try to say it probably every time preaching on on parables is that the parables give voice to Jesus's own mission, and they are actually a constitutive part of his mission. So it's not like he's not like spinning stories. He, in some ways, you could say. To give you a foothold, I say something like, his parables explain what he's doing. Yeah, so we get that. But it's a bit more. It's like his parables advance what he's doing. They do give voice to what he's doing, but they also advance what he's doing. And this is, this is what he's come to do. Jesus come to not just sow seed. It's not just that Jesus come to sow seed. It's that he's come to bring humanity to full flourishing. Now, this is a particular, I say it's a particular uh, vision of the kingdom of God, and, and not just in its end, because I think Israel would, would acknowledge, the Israel, even of his day, would acknowledge this, that, of course, it's our great aspiration to be the light of the world. Um, the way they're going about it seems to be uh, quite a bit different from what God intended, and we can, we can say that with real confidence, because Jesus opposes them, and he is God. So that, that means something. That's my logic for the, that's my logic lesson for the morning. Um, but he, but what did they expect when, uh, when the kingdom of God would come? They expected it to come with a bang, right? They, could, they expected it to come in its, say, full implementation overnight, as it were. It's one of the main reasons that Jesus draws on, draws heavily on agricultural images because, and, and say organic growth and development because the kingdom of God is not coming like that. 
And thank God it's not coming like that. Where would we find ourselves if it, if it did? We find ourselves on the outside looking in. And, he, and, and so Jesus is, um, is, is preaching. Uh, he's giving voice to not only, say, his vision of the kingdom of God, but how it will take root, how it will come about. And that, I think, that allows us to understand some of what goes on in the, in the middle of the passage where he said, the mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you. The people, his, his, the 12 and the people gathered around him seeking the explanation of the parable, the, 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 um, the mystery of the kingdom of God, not just like the, the secret or the problem or the whatever, the, the mystery, the mystery that you are entering into as participants in the work of building God's kingdom, the mystery has been granted to you. But to those outside, everything comes in parables so that they won't pick up on what's going on. We say, but isn't, isn't the kingdom of God for everyone? And, and, we ha- and we have to say, we could go back to the parable and see that, yes, it is, and no, it's not. Yes, it is, in the sense of how ridiculous this sower is, the sower of seed. He's throwing his seed on the path. I mean, now we may not understand that. If you don't understand that, we really have to get back to our roots. You know, <laughs> like we have to, <laughs> if you have to talk to Lori if you don't understand that. <laughs> How many gardeners throw their seed on the path? It doesn't make any sense, okay? Like, what, what's the point? So, yes, it is for everyone. God is scattering the seed, right? Jesus, in his, in his ministry, is bringing God's love to bear for everyone. But no, it's not in the sense that not everybody receives it in the same way. Or receives it at all. And so the call, the call to conversion, then, is... For everyone, the summons to join Jesus' mission of building the kingdom of God on earth is for everyone, but isn't, isn't assimilated or responded to or received by everyone in the same way. And that's then what the rest of the parable is. So I just want to, I just, my, my one point of preaching, I think, then, is, is this. Um, I know I've already had 30. Okay, fine. Okay, I've already had them. Okay, one more. Okay, one more. It's all about love. It's all, I know, you knew it was going to be this. I know. It was so anticlimactic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the, same, it's the same point every day. I'm sorry. It's like, oh, he's going to say something new now. No, he's not. <laughs> he's never. Um, he's, one point is it's, it's love. It's love. And it's all the way down and it's all the way up. Hear the, hear the parable, right? Love has to be received all the way down. And it has to grow all the way up. So here, right? It's all about bearing fruit. But bearing fruit is a matter of being aligned with the will of God, which is love, all the way through. There's no other, there's no other way to bear fruit. There's no other way to bear fruit except to be perfectly aligned with God all the way down, all the way up. And his will is love. He is love. He calls us to participate in his own life of love. He wants our lives to be transformed by his love and to become an expression of his love for the world. That's it. And look at all the things that, look at all the things that then stop this from happening. Yeah, say we see here some some eager enthusiasts, right? We, yeah, we we're eager, but did no stamina. It's like okay, yes, love, and then you're like the first challenge you face. You're like well, maybe not love. It's not that e- it's not it's not as easy or exciting as I thought it would be. So we give up, right? Or even to be picked off before before it begins. We see, and then and then some that some that starts and grows and but then overcome by worldly anxiety right it's like that's what that's what i mean by all the way all the way up as well right because we the word god's love starts to grow in us but it doesn't mean that our uh our focus is remains fixed without work without work on our part to remain to remain fixed to remain focused on god's Love and the project of bringing his kingdom to life in the world. And I, should, I shouldn't overcomplicate it. 
receiving God's love, being loved by him, and then loving. That's it. It's the whole, it's the whole of human life. It's worship. It's worship. It's loving God. He's number one. Not you, sorry. He's number one. We're worshiping God. And then worship giving rise to mission. That's it. All the way down, all the way up, right? Receiving love. When we worship God, this is an interesting thing. Uh, this is it. When we worship God, we realize that the priority of our life is to be loved by Him. That's a strange thing. It's not like we worship God, I'm going to do all the work, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plow through, I'm going to get it done. That's not the point. If God is the center of our heart and life, we realize that the primary, say, I don't know how to say, puzzle piece or the, the main thing in our life is to be loved by him. To allow ourselves to be loved by him. And then being transformed by his loving us, now we can love all the more. Mission. Right? So worship and mission. Our hearts, I mean, you see it in the mission statement. Do you know our, our parish's mission statement? That our hearts are lit up by worship, by prayer, by praise, so that we can bring the fire of divine love to everyone we encounter. And that's what, that's what Jesus is doing. Now, we should, what's our, our job here? Right, of course, we want the kingdom of God. We want the kingdom of God. Yeah, we want it. We want it. Keep, let's go, let's go. It, but to keep focus in that eager enthusiasm, to keep focus there on the fact that the progress of the kingdom of God comes here, in my heart, in your heart. That's where God is making progress today for the kingdom. So we give ourselves, we give ourselves over uh, to him for that work in anticipation of the fact that with the strength that he gives us, remaining focused on him, becoming love, allowing our ourselves to be loved and to love in return, Right, focused on him again, all the way down and all the way up, he will bear fruit in us and through us, 30, 60, and 100 fold.